Welcome everybody to Prep City Talks. We are at the Black Swan State Theatre Company and we are looking into a play titled The Event, which was inspired by the massacre which took place in Norway in 2011. We have got esteemed actresses and actors and we've got some fantastic and wonderful choir members. It's going to be a blast and I'm sure everybody is going to enjoy it. We had our first season at the beginning of 2016 in the Sydney Festival and we performed in a town hall in a, a western suburb of Sydney. So that's where it felt really in its place because that's kind of where the play is set. And then we performed in the Adelaide Festival, then in Sydney again, Belvoir Street Theatre and in Melbourne at the Malt House. And this is all in 2016 and now it's coming here to Perth and after this it'll do a regional tour of New South Wales and Victoria, go to towns like Geelong and Wollongong and Tamworth and Lismore. And that's what the play is designed to be. When the writers who are from the UK designed it, they had in mind that it would tour and go to any town in England, all of which have their own village choirs, and they meet up with them and have a short window of time to put it together. And so for us, now we must be up to, must be at least 60 in four, five different states. But for all of us, that's what keeps it fresh. It's never the same two nights in a row. It's about a woman who was running this choir as part of her church, and the choir were victims of a terrible mass shooting. And it's about her our journey to understand who the perpetrator was and her journey to try and really get rid of the hate in her heart about him and in an attempt to understand him for her to come to some sort of peace about what happened. So something interesting happened during one of your performances. You can share with us about one of the victims of the incident and now. Uh, yes, yes, who came and saw the show. I mean, this piece was created in a way with a Norwegian theatre company. When it was first performed, they performed it in front of the parents and close relatives of the victims of the oh, Utoya. From that we understood that it is actually a, a process of healing that this play can be part of. What attracted you to this piece? You know, the theatrical form of it I thought was really dynamic. The fact that a new, a new choir every night comes on stage and that they are a community choir so they're not performers or actors, they are people who love singing together as a group and how as a community we can bond together to, to sort of dispel the fear and anxiety about this phenomenon that's happening. Kath and I work together a bit now and she's an amazing actor to work with. Claire and I, the director, have worked together on multiple things and fantastic. Yeah, we've kind of had a bit of a rotating um, crew around it since the beginning because there's been multiple lives of this show. It's great, you know, and then you come in and there's a choir and you meet the choir um, an hour before you do the show. and have a cup of tea and a chat and then you just jump in. So it's kind of, it's, it's rare to do a show like that, that, that there's these moments of interjected performance that you haven't really rehearsed with. So it keeps it fresh. So have you got any expectation for the event? There's an honesty and a rawness to this show that's kind of refreshing, I think. Having a community choir on stage, you know, 40 people behind actors, like it's, you don't see that. There's something that, I don't know, it taps into something in us that kind of wants to belong, I think. The Events is a play that was written by David Gregg and um, he's a writer from Scotland. He was asked to write a play about the 2011 shootings on Atoya Island, um, the massacre that happened there. And what he ended up creating was this beautiful work that uh, involves community choirs and it's about how how a community heals after a tragedy. It's very much about being a good human being. It's about um, our civic engagement. It's about how kind we are to one another. It's about how we respond as a community to those people who are disenfranchised and how we can bring them in um, and care for them. So we're really excited to be involved with the Black Swan Theatre Company and the choir's really enjoying good music and, and I think the idea of the choir being part of the performance is really unique. We kind of see it as pretty integral to being a part of the art scene overall in Perth, we see choirs as integral to the fabric of the arts and you know our responsibility is to tell stories from the margins that other people can't tell and the events is a great way to be able to achieve that. What attracted you to this piece? And, um, well, 
you know, the theatrical form of it, I thought was really dynamic. The fact that a new, a new choir every night comes on stage and that they are a community choir, so they're not performers or actors. They are people who love singing together as a group. And this piece is all about how as a community we can bond together to, to sort of dispel the fear and anxiety about this phenomenon that's happening. And so I thought the actual theatricality of the piece was the piece too. My choir was not state-funded propaganda for multiculturalism. My choir was Jesse. So uh, can you tell us a bit about some of the roles you've played and Yes, well, just recently I worked with Catherine, who's also in this play. We did Antony and Cleopatra, which is like a classical Shakespeare text with Bell Shakespeare. So we did a national tour of that. And then I tend to work with Melbourne Theatre Company and the Malt House Theatre in Melbourne a fair bit. So I've worked with Melbourne Theatre Company. We did a tour of a play called What Rhymes With Cars and Girls, which was based on an album by Tim Rogers. He's an Australian music icon. So that was great to tour around that. It was play with songs. I've never sung on stage before so it was a kind of great experience to bash out with some amazing musicians and then I've done a couple of classics. Edward II which was a, a Marlowe play that was modernised and we put on at the Malt House and also Annie Baker's contemporary classic called John and that was last year at Melbourne Theatre Company. What is this like, mixing music with the play? I think that music and theatre almost always need to go together. Um, the, the thing about live music or singing, I should say, community singing, is that um, it's been proven that when you're listening to music and you're listening particularly to the human voice, that our breaths in, our, in the audience match up with our performers and you can almost get everybody's heartbeat beating at the same time in an audience. I think that's pretty wild. So what gives you the drive, the motivation to do what you're doing? Uh, what gives me the motivation? I, I love it. I've always loved theatre. I think I love people. I love thinking about who we are and maybe how we can be better as a society. And I feel very lucky that in theatre that's one of the things that you get to kind of turn over and mull over with a, with a group of other amazing creative minds every day. Everyone's welcome here. We're all just one big crazy tribe up here. And if you feel like singing, sing. And if you don't feel like singing, that's okay too. Nobody feels like singing. As a prolific actress and well known all around the world, what motivates you to doing what you're doing? I think that you always feel you've never actually nailed it. <laughs> And I wouldn't say all around the world, by the way. But, you know, there's always this sense of, I didn't quite get it. I, I could do that. I could do that better. So um, until I get that sort of satisfaction, I think, you, you know, you, you're doomed to keep going. Our audience are very, very interested to knowing a bit about your background. Do you mind sharing with us? Well, I come from Melbourne. I, you know, I went to drama school when I was really young, 17. And, um, you know, I did my first film when uh, I was in third year at drama school. And it sort of worked ever since. You know, I, I try to balance television and film with theatre. I like it all. I think that way you get extended as an actor so you don't get pocketed into a certain bracket. And, you know, I do really enjoy theatre because I think it extends you as an actor in a way that television can't it, just because of the nature of theatre and what you can become and the fact that you have six weeks sometimes rehear to rehearse a piece so you can sort of get a few more tools in your bag to create characters whereas in television you're often on you don't get any rehearsal you have to just sort of you know get it get it done as best as you can in that short amount of time being able to play both worlds has been really good for me as a role model, because our viewers know you're a role model to them, have you got any words of wisdom or words of advice for people who are looking up to you? Uh, <laughs> don't act. <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, I think, you know, being an actor, it's sort of like a virus. You can't get rid of it. It's a bug. There's no antibiotics. It's something that you pursue because you can't do anything else. And, um, you know, I think it's 
best thing that you can do if you have that bug or that virus is to create a community around you that's supportive and that helpful and that, that you are supportive and helpful of your community as well. That it's a, it's a difficult career, it's, it can be um, very um, sad very sometimes um, frustrating but if you have a community around you that you also are part of um, that's positive and excited then I think you could survive. As an actress you've you've got yourself involved in a lot of plays, roles, can you shed more light on your experiences doing all of this? Yeah, look, you know, it starts small, you know, you get small roles, you do, you know, the ingenues in certain plays that are never that sort of exciting. But then as you get older, you get really some really fantastic roles. And I've been able to do, like just recently I did Cleopatra and Antony and Cleopatra. And to be able to sort of try and shed light on those historical characters in, in, in those plays is really, really exciting. But you do have to start small in a way and build and build and build your your own talent and your own understanding of what it is to be a human being before you can play those big roles. So I would really encourage people to start small and, and then you'll get there. What does the future hold for Catherine? Uh, well, the thing, being an actor, is you never really know. <laughs> I'm doing the events here and then I've got some stuff back in Melbourne. But um, yeah, you, you that's, that's part of the joy and part of the panic of being an actor is that um, the future is as a complete um, mystery. I mean, that's, that's fine too, because we're just one great big crazy tribe up here. And we are just going for a short break. Sit back, relax, and we're going to be back soon. Stay tuned.